Welcome to the Buick Outdoors Podcast. I'm your host, Sheldon Marion, and on this podcast, we dive deep into the outdoors. We discuss hunting and fishing techniques, give you tips and tricks, tell stories, and everything in between to help you enjoy the outdoors. This podcast is brought to you by Northbound Gear. Northbound Gear is designed for maneuverability and durability and is made to last through even the toughest of elements. My go-to for their pants is the Water Resistance Adventure Pants and their lined waterproof jeans. I've worn them while out ice fishing, crawling through the woods bear hunting, and on the west coast out on the boat. And I even wear them around when I'm having a lazy day at the house. They are that comfortable. They also offer jackets, summer pants, backpacks, and many more. Men's and women's sizes are available, and by partnering with One Tree Planted, you're planting a tree with every purchase. Check them out for yourself at northboundgear.co, and when you use my promo code SHELDON15 at checkout, you'll receive 15% off your order. That's northboundgear.co and promo code SHELDON15. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Buick Outdoors podcast. If you're new here, I'm your host, Sheldon Marion. And before we get into this episode, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to listen to it, head over to pretty well any major podcast platform and search up the Buick Outdoors podcast if you just want to listen to it. Uh, if you are just listening to it and you want to watch the video version, head over to our YouTube channel and there'll be a podcast playlist uh, as well as there's a playlist for all of our other outdoor adventures, hunting, fishing, exploring, cooking. Uh, there's a little bit of everything for everyone. And then while you're over there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to another podcast. Uh, this week, me and Shelby went out and uh, we did some more exploring again. Uh, we checked out the Gundy Caves out by Pooskoopy. And then we also went out to the Six Peak Dinosaur Trackway site out by Hudson Hope. Uh, if you haven't heard of the Six Peak Dinosaur Trackway site, uh, it's in the Hudson Hope area. And uh, it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, dinosaur trackway sites in the world. Uh, I believe there's roughly 1,200 dinosaur footprints uh, from 12 different dinosaurs. Uh, I can't remember exactly which dinosaurs are out there, but I know some of them were, uh, theropods, like a three-toed dinosaur. Uh, there was a couple of, uh, I want to say they're called bronchiosaurus, like the long necks from, uh, Land Before Time movie. Uh, and then also, uh, what's that other dinosaur from Land Before Time? Sarah, the yep, yep, yep. That girl there, I believe there's several of their tracks out there as well. Uh, you know, it's it's one of the coolest places I've ever been to. And I've gotten to see some just amazing places over the years. But uh, you know, to go there and, and just to see the volume of tracks that are there. And they don't even have all of it uncovered. Uh, they believe that there is a potential of being up to 5,000 uh, dinosaur tracks in that area. Uh, just because of how much they have exposed right now and how much could potentially be exposed. Uh, basically what it looks like is kind of like a big shale slide almost. And in the bottom where it's all exposed, it's only maybe, maybe 15 yards long and about I don't know 40 yards wide that's exposed but the entire area uh it's like a giant rectangle so say it's all 45 yards wide but it's like 150 yards long and uh man there's so much more for them to uh uncover out there and uh I hope I hope if they do do that I'm able to go out there uh with those guys and either film it or just be there with a shovel or <laughs> a brush or whatever. Because, man, uh, that place is so cool. In the future, what they're really hoping to do out there, too, uh, once they get uh, more funding and, and everything like that, 
is, is that they want to put up like a steel building over the entire thing. Uh, in 2008 is when they were actually discovered and it took them eight years to get funding just to expose what's exposed right now. Uh, and that mainly came from one family foundation. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I can't remember exactly the family foundation. There is, there's a little bit of write-ups and stuff that you can kind of search up. You can see their names there, but, uh. Anyways, it took them eight years uh, for them just to get funding to go out there and to expose like 750 square meters of dirt. And uh, pretty well now they're saying that they want to expose the rest of the 3,000 square meters. And once that's done, they're wanting to put up a building. But again, they're waiting for funding uh, just for excavating the site researching the site uh pretty well doing all the paperwork and pictures and all that stuff and then they also want to put up a steel building out there too uh the steel building uh it's for a couple of different reasons one is they do want to protect it from all the all the snow wind and rain and natural erosion that'll occur uh, especially once as you expose the rock now the water is hitting it directly uh but another major thing is that they want to stop vandalism. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, there's been more than one occasion now that people have gone out there and vandalized the site. Uh, some people have gone out there with jackhammers and actually tried to jackhammer out a couple of the tracks. Uh, one guy went out there with a great big circular saw. I'm assuming like a big diamond bit uh saw used for like cutting tile or something like that and they tried to cut out one of the tracks that you can visibly see uh there's a big square around one of the tracks uh lots of people have tried chipping him out with hammer and chisels uh one guy actually got caught and the uh natural resource officers uh they took that guy to court and they actually were able to convict him uh, of several crimes. Uh, and that landed him 30 days in jail and also a $20,000 fine. So the province of BC and the natural resource officers are taking this very serious. Uh, as well as the uh, Salto First Nations that are in the area. Uh, when I was out there filming uh, this week, uh, we actually had to stop filming for a little while. There was nine or ten uh natural resource officers that came out there along with several members of the salto first nations and they were pretty well giving them just a tour of the site uh one guy was i i can't remember what exactly uh like his title was kind of like head protector or something like that but he was passing the reins on to the next guy so he wanted to bring him out and to give them all just a tour of the area as long as there's a couple of elders that were out there and a couple of the uh, the young bucks came out there as well for them to all just kind of have a tour of the site and to uh, see the dinosaur tracks firsthand. And then also they went over the court case and all the, all the details and stuff and I'm not going to go into that because it's not my place to... Uh, to say exactly what happened and all that i mean you got a little you got the gist of the story so uh yeah that's all i kind of feel comfortable saying about that but uh you know it's it's amazing with these trackway sites uh you know this one in particular was created during the cretaceous period which was you know, 117 million years ago roughly and uh then it was discovered in 2008 2016 they exposed uh, a small portion of it and i think it was like 2019 somebody was already in there uh pretty well destroying the place uh so you know it was around for 117 million years nothing ever really bad happened to it and then once it was in the public eye for a handful of years there's already somebody going in there and uh 
<laughs> wrecking it for everyone else. And even the uh, the South Old First Nations, uh, they didn't say that they want to keep anybody out of the area, even though they do see it as kind of like a sacred place for them. Uh, they want people to come out. They want people to get excited about it, and they want uh, especially kids to come out there and see them. They just don't want the vandalism uh, to happen, which is <laughs> completely understandable. Uh also, part of the Salto uh, being out there, uh, they're telling us that they hired a bunch of people to uh, kind of be protectors of the area. Uh, periodically, they make trips up there just to see if there's any recent activity, check up on the track site. Uh, they're also talking about putting up more signage. Uh, there is one sign up right at the track site. Uh, and the sign's not in good shape. It's pretty well held up with kind of like a stack of rocks kind of a thing. Uh, so they're wanting to put up more signage right at the site and possibly at the, the trailhead too. And uh, just to let people know that, you know, it is an actual, not quite the a wonder of the world kind of thing, but it is a significant find. Uh, for science, for the South Old First Nations, and it's just a very, very cool place. We were there for about maybe two hours, uh, with the natural resource officers and the South Old First Nations coming in there. That was about a 30 minute, 45 minute pause that we did there. But even with that, you know, we were there for an hour and a half. For this really small area, like, <laughs> like a, a third of the size of your backyard kind of thing that's actually exposed. So, I mean, like, it kind of shows, like, how much time you're able to spend there and just walk around and check out every single track. And you can see, you know, exactly where the dinosaurs walked. The, there's clear as day paths and deep impressions and then also uh while they were wrapping up they wanted to do a couple of like group photo shoots and stuff like that so we just kind of hiked up on top where there's still a bunch of shale and along the one side there uh some of the shale has been removed pushed off from rain or somebody kicked it off of the shoe or whatever and even up at the very top there is several dinosaur tracks up on top that's not part of the main part that's exposed so that's part of the reason why they believe uh that once they start to expose even more of it there's gonna be potentially thousands of more tracks in that area plus it's it's really cool when you're looking at it it's just one big giant slab that kind of came up out of the ground kind of a thing and uh you know, really, the part that they're wanting to expose is a small fraction of actually what could be there. Uh, if you went kind of to the right, it stops and it drops off going down into, like, the creek basin there kind of a thing. But on the left-hand side, it's all treed and there's a road and stuff like that. So, like, man, you could go up to the very end expose that and then where it gets into the moss and kind of rolls back to a flat spot you know that might be where it actually ends but if you went to the left who knows how far that can go in there and i don't know if there is plans to maybe expose that side as well but uh man if there is like oh, i would be so cool to be part of that project uh you know if you're curious about how to get out there uh I did film everything on how to get out there and all that stuff. But if you can't wait until that comes out and you're just wanting to go out there after listening to the podcast or you're listening to the podcast while you're driving out there, uh, basically from Hudson Hope, we took Canyon Drive and that takes you to the WAC Bennett Dam and you cross the dam and you get onto what's called the Utah Road. And 
you take the Utah Road until it connects to the Table Road, which is about 7 kilometers. And at that intersection, you hang a left. You take that for another 2.5 kilometers, where you intersect with the Johnson Creek uh, Road. You hang a right. And you take that going towards Carbon Lake. Uh, you go past Carbon Lake, and you go to the mile marker 71, where there's a Y in the road. I think it's like the only Y in the road, but you hang a left and you go another, I think it was about another two kilometers and you'll see the trailhead is on the left hand side and uh, there's a bunch of parking on the right and yeah, park there. It's about a 200 meter hike in uh, and it's uphill the entire way. Coming back, it's no problem but going up. I mean, I took lots of breaks going up there. I'm kind of fat and slow, but uh, it it is very accessible uh, to get in there. Uh, it is an old Can4 road, so there is deactivation ditches in there, so you can't just drive in there if you had a quad. Maybe a side-by-side. -side. I'm not too sure because uh, the first deactivation ditch, it is pretty steep, so when you come through it, your your tail end might drag on the ground a little. But, uh, but anyways, yeah, it's only 200 meters up there, uphill the whole way. Go around one little corner, and then the the track site is on your right, and man, it's it's phenomenal. You'll you'll know it when you see it. Uh, also, there is uh, Google Maps. Uh, people have pinged it lots. Uh, if you want, I can even put the GPS coordinates in the comment section. I don't know if it'll show up if you're just listening to this, but. If it doesn't, head over to our YouTube channel. Go uh, check out our podcast playlist. Find this podcast. And in the description below, there'll be a bunch of numbers there. Uh, just highlight that, copy it, and paste it into Google Maps. And it'll take it directly to it, basically. As for uh, Gundy Caves, uh, that's another local spot where... Uh, I didn't even know it existed until a couple weeks ago. Uh, Tiffany, uh, crap. Sorry, Tiffany, don't remember your last name. A uh, Facebook friend of mine, anyways. Uh, she took her young pup out to Gundy Caves, and she posted her pictures up online there. So, uh, yeah, I went onto the Google search, typed in Gundy Caves onto Google Maps, and it was just, whoop popped right up. So I figured that would be another cool little spot to go and check out. Uh, you know, unfortunately for us in this area, uh, we have a ton of places like Gundy Caves uh, that are very easily accessible. But unfortunately, there's there's really kind of nothing advertising them, which is kind of good but bad at the same time. Uh, you know, it's good because if you do have this really cool little secret honey hole spot you know, it's kind of nice being able to go there and not have a pile of people there but then it also kind of sucks because you got guys like me who are just interested in seeing cool things uh we have really kind of no way of knowing where they are but uh but anyways we went and we checked it out and it's just south of poos uh to get out there uh there's several different ways of going out there. Uh, for the easiest way to follow, uh, we headed out of Pooscoopy going towards like Grand Perry area. And you take your first left after the scales onto the old Edmonton Highway. And then I, I can't remember how many kilometers it is, like 15 or something like that. And then we hung a left onto the Gundy Road. And then you take that just a couple of kilometers, you go across Gundy Creek, and then you get up to a little corner, you can park your vehicle on the right-hand side, and the caves are on your left. Uh, you can see them straight from the road. Uh, the hike in, it's maybe 45, 50 feet kind of a thing, but it is a pretty steep little climb. Like our feet were kind of sliding every once in a while. Even 45, 50 feet, that sounds that sounds too long. Probably only about 30, 30 to 40 feet kind of a thing. 
But yeah, it's, it's not very long at all. It's just pretty steep. Uh, I don't know, maybe one day I'll head back out there with a rope or something. I'll tie it to one of the trees. But uh, yeah, that place, it's pretty cool. I want to say it's just like sandstone rock that's been eroded by a bunch of, you know, wind and rain and snow and all that stuff. Uh, they're not exactly caves. Like, they don't go in very far. They're more or less, like, deep depressions in the sandstone. But, I mean, regardless, it is wicked cool uh, that those things are sitting there. Uh, as far as I know, there's no, like, First Nations artifacts or anything like that. Like, there's nothing connected to the First Nations there. It's just, you know, sandstone with holes in it kind of a deal. Uh, it's not like the Charlie Lake Caves where there's some actual uh, uh, historical significance to it kind of a thing. Uh, but it is one of those really neat places to check out. Uh, when you go there... Uh, once you take that steep little hike up, uh, immediately the trail splits into a Y. Uh, if you go to the left, it's, it's pretty nifty. Uh, the trail is real short, you know, maybe 40 feet kind of a thing. Uh, there's a ton of small little caves and cracks and crevices and stuff that you can uh, kind of look into. And there's graffiti all over the place, unfortunately. Uh, but there's also a bunch of people... They chiseled their name into the rock and stuff like that. The one it was, uh, I remember it because it's Shelby. Uh, it was Shelby from 1994, and I was bugging my Shelby that somebody chipped her name in there before she was born. So, <laughs> kind of got a kick out of that. Uh, if that was you that happened to be out there, your name's still chipped in that rock. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty neat to see all that stuff out there. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can walk up, you know, whatever it was, 40 feet or so, and there's a couple places you can kind of climb into and, and check it out. The one, one little kind of cave or room, whatever you want to call it, it echoed like crazy. I couldn't believe when I poked my head in there because I was talking to the camera and filming when I was in there. If you watch the video, you'll... You'll see me go, holy cow, it's echoey like crazy in here. And, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty neat to check out. And then uh, if you head off to the right-hand side, again, same kind of deal. Uh, there's some deep crevices. There's one where you can actually crawl up through, and then at the top there's a little hole you can poke through and get on top. Kind of Well, not quite on top, but three-quarters of the way on top. So that was pretty nifty. Uh, if you go up that way, though, once as you start to come up to the very top of it there, there is what looks to be kind of like maybe a, a coyote den or a fox den. So just be kind of mindful of that. Maybe don't put, poke your head in there. And then, uh, yeah, you can climb up to the top there, and then there's a little ridge that you can kind of tiptoe around and... Uh, Right at the very top, too, there's a bunch of Saskatoon bushes. So if you go there earlier on in the year, maybe June or July, bring a bucket with you and uh, maybe pick some Saskatoons and <laughs> have yourself a little Saskatoon pie or something. Saskatoons are great and uh, vanilla ice cream. But anyways, yeah, we went and checked that out. And uh, once as I kind of climbed through the top there, uh, I hopped back onto the trail. We went up to the very tip top of the caves there. You can kind of get an overlook of uh, pretty well, like, the neighboring field. And a little bit of the Gundy Creek kind of, kind of winds up like a big S and comes around. But, uh, yeah, the the scenery up top, well, it's it's not much, but, uh, but it is nice anyways. And then, uh, yeah, once we were done there, we climbed back down. That day it was, it was like plus 31, so we ended up going down to Gundy Creek, and I ended up catching a fish by hand there. Uh, there's all sorts of small little minnows, and I'm not too sure what they were. Uh, I filmed a little bit of that, but I don't think I'm going to turn it into a video, but 
it looks like it's a pike minnow. But I'm not too sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure Gundy Creek flows into Swan Lake. So I, I don't know. Maybe uh, somebody with a little more knowledge of Swan Lake can let me know kind of what might be in Gundy Creek. Uh, it would be kind of cool to know. Also, if you go out there and, you know, check out the the caves, maybe bring a fishing rod. Uh, who knows, fishing rod and a couple of jigs or the old five of diamonds, you, <laughs> you never know. You might catch them because, uh, yeah, there was like hundreds of minnows in there. So, uh, you never know. You might be able to catch a fish in that dirty brown hot creek. <laughs> You know, one thing I that I enjoy about uh, doing this whole YouTube thing and filming, like, kind of like what's just in our backyard is, uh, you know, I'm able to, to reach out to a lot of locals and uh, just kind of show them what, what we actually have here. Uh, unfortunately, for some reason, uh, it doesn't matter what you Google or look up, you know, like, cool sights to see in the peace region or local attractions or anything like that you really don't get anything you kind of get the typical you know milestone mile marker stuff like alaska highway mile zero post once in a while something about like the farmer's market will come up but when it comes to things like gundy caves fossil falls you know, it's really not talked about or advertised, and I I don't really know why. So, I mean, I know, like, I've gotten some grief over some of my videos. Uh, just some people love it, some people hate it, uh, especially places like Fossil Falls. That one, it's been like a 50-50 mix. I've had a lot of people go out there and uh, bring their kids out, and their kids go just buck wild looking at all the fossils and checking out the waterfall and playing in the water and stuff and they absolutely love it and you know that makes me just like incredibly proud of what I do uh but then there's also the other side where people just for whatever reason uh, they get so mad about it because they it's it is understandable because the more people that go out there the more fossils and stuff are going to be taken and you know like i get it but at the same time uh, i think the good outweighs the bad uh if you go to gundy caves i mean really if you brought out another can of spray paint and added to the graffiti that's already there nobody's gonna be able to tell the difference unless you date it like, those walls, the majority of them are painted, which is unfortunate, but it's still a cool place to check out. Uh, the dinosaur tracks at Six Peaks, they want to keep it somewhat private and somewhat secretive, uh, just because of the vandalism that has happened there. But in the same token, there's all the dinosaur tracks in, like, the Tumble Ridge area, where they're advertised like crazy. You know, that's one of the biggest things that bring people into Tumblr Ridge is to check out the dinosaur tracks and then check out the dinosaur museum and stuff like that. <clears throat> and I honestly kind of think that with it being such an attraction and being so public that there's so many people going into those dinosaur tracks that there's kind of sort of always like a like a guard almost kind of a thing you know there's always somebody there so you you can't get away with vandalizing them and you definitely can't get away with trying to cut them out so when it comes to like the six peak site if it became a site where a bunch of people went i i really don't see a problem with that other than maybe more foot traffic on it might wreck a couple of the sites or a couple of the tracks kind of a thing but with that much more uh public eye on it there might be a push to get more funding for it and who knows maybe some big fancy ceo or 
one of the local companies in the area steps up and says, you know what, it's going to cost whatever, ballpark $300,000 to put up a giant steel building in there, maybe up to $500,000, who knows, maybe exposing this place and getting more uh, public interest, maybe there'll be a bunch of companies that all pitch in 50000 bucks, and they're able to get the funding to expose more ground and then to actually put up a building and maybe then Salto can hire a couple of people just to kind of basically sit back and relax and act as like a tour guide almost. You know, so it's uh, it'd be a win-win if that happens. Not only will it protect the site from natural erosion, it'll protect the site from uh, vandalism and theft. It'll also create, you know, a couple of jobs anyways. Uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's not exactly my area of expertise, I guess, but, uh, I'm just pretty well thinking out loud and just being hopeful. But anyways, guys, you know, I really hope, uh, this podcast here gets you kind of excited for a couple of the videos that I have coming out here in the future. Uh, I believe they're coming out September. Let me just check my calendar here. September 16th and then September 23rd. Those uh, videos will be coming out. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, uh, head over there and subscribe to the channel so you can check out those videos when they come up. If you hit the little bell notification, it'll send you a little notification to your phone or to your email address if you have that all set up telling you when uh, I uploaded a video. And, uh, yeah, you know, I really hope uh, this kind of gets you up and off the couch. And I really hope that you want to bring your kids out there with you as well. Uh, one of the things that we've seen out there was somebody brought out some plastic dinosaurs to the trackway site and uh, kind of left them out there. So i seen those kind of had a little giggle and a laugh. Kind of play with them a little bit, put them back. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, the next child, big or small, comes out there. And, uh, you know, they kind of get the same kick out of the dinosaurs being there with the dinosaur tracks. Uh, but anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this podcast. I really hope uh, it kind of gets you out and about and makes you want to do some exploring in your own backyard. Uh, especially if you live up here in the North Peace region of British Columbia. You know, we have all sorts of just beautiful, magnificent things to see. Whether it's fossils, uh, remote lakes, rivers, waterfalls, dinosaur tracks. You know, we we have some of the best country you can imagine out here. And some of the coolest things to see. So anyways guys, I hope uh, you get up off the couch here this weekend. Head out and uh, check out one of these sites. Uh, and again, I want to thank you guys all for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, head over to our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe over there. Hit the bell notification so you know when all of our videos come out. And we'll see you on the next one.